Hello and welcome to The Joy of Editing with Dave Kelly. On today's episode, we're looking at Luminar 4. Today, we're going to take a look at the matte look tool. It's a really great tool for adding an uh, aged look to your image, uh, nice flat color, high contrast. It's really beautiful in fashion photography, and it's also really nice on just about any type of photography, landscapes or whatever. Uh, so let's take a look at that today, and without any further ado, let's get started. What we want to do first is just come over here to the creative tab right here and just give that a click and let's find the matte look right here so we're going to open this up let's open up its advanced settings as well now you'll notice in here we have an amount a fade saturation color toning and vividness this color toning is going to be really nice and you'll see here in a few uh, minutes how nice this really works for us as well as these saturation and vividness controls but let's start out with the amount now so let's start to pull this up to the right and you'll notice as i do we're starting to get some more contrast but we're also starting to flatten out that color to give us that aged look which is really pretty and then we have this fade slider so if you pull this to the right what you're going to do is if you'll notice in the uh, darker areas we'll start to lose some detail in the shadow areas of the image here so let's move that fade slider to the right can you see that see how the it's starting to add like a bit of a hazy look to the uh, shadow colors of the image which is giving it that really nice high fashion uh, faded look really really pretty so We'll adjust that to where we think we like it. We can always come back and readjust here. Let's play with our amount a little bit more here. Maybe somewhere right around in there. Now, right now, the saturation, if I move it to the right, you won't really notice anything happening to the image because this is mainly dealing with the tone, color toning that we're going to be using. So let me double click this and get it back to 50 at the center of the uh, saturation range here. So now let's go with color toning here. And if we take this range slider and start to move it to the right, well, you'll notice that the hue is on the set on reds right now. So as we move this to the right, you'll see we'll start to add a really beautiful red tone to the image. And the further we move this to the right, the, the, you know, the more saturation we're going to see there, all right, in that, in that uh, red range. Okay, so when we get to a place where we kind of like it, then we can take the shoe slider and we can go through the different hues here see more into green tones into blue tones and so you can just slide it around to find pick out the tone that you really like and on this image i'm thinking maybe somewhere around in there this bit of a reddish pink tone right around there now we can take the saturation slider and we can move it to the right and you notice we'll get more saturation on that particular tone so it's working with that tone or if we move it to the left we'll come back to the original image here so let's just adjust that saturation up a little bit to where it looks pretty nice. Now this particular particular slider, the vividness slider, it's kind of dealing with the overall saturation of the image. So if I move it to the right, we'll increase saturation. If I move it to the left, we'll decrease saturation. So it defaults at around like a minus 20, which is usually a pretty good point for it. But if you just wanted to pull that saturation back a little bit more, you could. Okay, maybe so somewhere right around in there. Now let me just come up to this saturation here and make sure I like what I have here. Okay, so something right around there. I think that looks really nice. Really like the way this image is looking, but the only thing that bothers me on it is on this side, this reflection of the girl here is a little bit bright. So I think what I want to do is let's go to the Pro Filters and go to Adjustable Gradient and... Let's uh, go ahead here and set orientation. I'm going to flip this. I think I'm going the right way. If not, we can keep on flipping it the other way. And let's just drag this across here. Maybe give it a little bit of an angle here, kind of matching the angle of this. We can adjust this graduation point out here where it gradiates. So we'll get the full effect over here, and it'll uh, uh, graduate up to here and then fade off uh, into this area right here. So this is the same uh, gradient, adjustable gradient that we use to do a top and bottom lighting, but you can also turn it on its side and, and work this way as well, which is really cool. And I thought I wanted to show you that to point that out to you. So let's just take the exposure and start. Oh, I'm on the wrong side. Okay, here. So no big deal. All we have to do is click bottom and pull the exposure back. And now we got the other side. So that's pretty neat. So let's just pull that exposure back a little bit. It just seemed like it was a little bit strong. 
maybe somewhere right around in there because we want to bring the emphasis into the face here. So I thought that would be a nice little fix on this particular image. And let's just click here. Let's click on this eyeball right here so we can see the before. So there's the original image and here's the after. So there's that faded look. It's really pretty. And then we added that a little adjustable gradient to darken up this side right here. Let's work on one more image. Okay, we have one more image here. So let's look work on this one here. So let's come back to creative and let's go to the matte look. Take our amount. Let's start to pull this up. And already you can see we're getting that higher contrast, that faded out color look. Really pretty. And now let's work with a fade here a little bit and see if we want to add a little bit of fade. See, we can add a lot of fade in just so you can see what it's doing here. But again, it's working on the darker portions of the image, the shadow, shadow areas of the image and pulling down the detail in the shadow. So maybe something right around in there. And then, of course, I don't think I showed this in last, on the last image, but we have this contrast slider, too. So if we want to increase contrast, we can give us even more contrast here if we want. Or we can move it back, depending on what, what type of a look you're looking for. I chose this image because it's got a lot of uh, uh, some of the woods and, and uh, nature in the background. So let's see what it does in an image like this. Let's open up our advanced settings here. And let's take up our color toning here and add some color tone to it. And that red tone is really pretty in there. So add as much of this tone as you want in here. And then you can work again with the hue slider. And come through and find a color that you really like. Something that you think works with it. Or, you know, you can leave it off and not use it at all. It's really up to you, whatever you like. So, yeah, I like that. I like the redder, reddish pink tones myself gives it a nice a nice high fashion look something like that it kind of color grades in fact it is color grading your image somewhat here so maybe somewhere right around there and then remember we have the saturation so this adjusts the saturation of the actual tone itself so i can pull the saturation back and go back to the original image or i can pull the saturation up and make that tone have more saturation in it depending what you like i don't want to go too crazy with it but I mean, that's that's even nice right there, but I'll just pull it back a little bit. I like to err on the side, side of subtleness, so I'm just going to pull it back a little bit, maybe somewhere right around in there. Now, this vividness, to me, this adjusts the overall uh, saturation of the image, so we can bring up the colors or, or bring them back, you know, mute those colors back a little bit more. So maybe somewhere somewhere right around there and that looks really pretty let's click this eyeball right here so here's the before and here's the after and i think that looks really nice so again here's the before and here's the after so some really beautiful results let's finish this image off with a nice vignette just to uh pull attention into the uh, model here so let's go to the um, essentials tab open it up and come down to vignette and you can choose your subject here you can click this and then choose the area where your subject's in but it defaults in the center for this image and that's going to be good i think so let's take the amount and let's pull the amount down let's just add a little bit of vignette and that's looking really nice now here's a little trick you can take this feather and move it the whole way to the left so you can actually see the shape of your vignette and then you can adjust the uh, roundness of it to how you want it to be okay now, if I uh, clicked on Choose Subject, let's just do that. Now I can uh, click it again and choose my model right here. So now the vignette is favoring more of my model right here, which I might like right there. So now let's take our feathering and move it to the right to fade that off really nicely. Now that's way too much vignette, so let's uh, pull the amount and move it more to the right here a little bit. We just want a little bit in there just to draw the attention into the model. So let's click this little toggle. There's the before and there's the after. Before and after. Maybe just a little bit more. Something like that. Let's click the toggle one more time before and after. And I think that's really looking nice. Now, of course, we also have this inner light. If we wanted to pull this to the right a little bit, inside the vignette will lighten up a little bit. So we might want to just, you don't want to go too crazy here, but just a little bit of inner light. You know, maybe around a six, somewhere right around there. 
Now let's click the toggle on the vignette. There's before and there's after. Now let's click this eyeball so we can click and hold it down. Left click it with your mouse. Hold it down. There's the before and there's the after. So a really beautiful look with this uh, matte look tool. I really love it. Well, there it is, the matte look tool inside of Luminar 4. I think you'll really enjoy it. Give it a try. It'll work on pretty much any type of image. Uh, just experiment with it. I think you're really going to enjoy it, so give it a try. Hey, if you enjoyed this video today, please give it a like and share it with your friends. If you're not yet subscribed to my channel, please subscribe and click the bell notification icon, and then every time I upload a new video, you'll be notified about it. Well, thanks again for joining me today in the joy of editing with Dave Kelly, and I'll see each and every one of you right here next time. But until then, happy editing.